With the Cardinals searching for answers to fix this offense, one publication suggests that a former Cardinal could be the answer. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Louvre and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who do make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by Monopoly Go. Game off. We got to talk more about Monopoly Go, the fast-paced game that lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. Download Monopoly Go, now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. All right, there's one question on everyone's mind right now. No, it's not, when is Ali going to quit? When is Mo getting fired? When are they going to sell the team? Not those questions. Those are different questions. That Okay, maybe those are on your mind as well. But uh, the one question I think a lot of us are thinking about is how do we get this offense going, right? When we're talking about just the team itself, how do we get this offense going? What do we got to do? Everyone's trying to figure this out. The fans, we're trying to figure it out. Coaches, executives, and of course, sports writers and people who blog uh, about the Cardinals trying to figure out anything and everything that might add something to this offense to just get them going in the right direction. Um, As soon as Contreras got hurt, I started scouring the free agency list to see if there were any veteran catchers that that might still be floating around out there that maybe the Cardinals could grab while Contreras was out, while uh, his absence is going to be what we're thinking still six to eight weeks with his fractured left arm. Uh, That's the latest word. So I, I was looking right away, like, is there anything? Is there, where is Matt Weeders? (laughs) Those kind of guys. Like, is anybody out there that that might be able to help us out? Uh, Didn't find a whole lot, to be honest with you. So unless they decide to trade for one, it looks like it's going to be Yvonne Herrera and Pedro Pajas. uh, It's going to be their show for the next couple of months. And not that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that it is. You know, hopefully Ali will be able to find a nice mix for both young players to get some playing time. But clearly, Yvonne Herrera is going to be the main guy and uh, pitchers are just going to have to be better, a whole lot better, to be honest, at holding on runners to offset the lack of throwing ability that Herrera has shown at the major league level behind home plate. Opposing runners are 17 for 17 against him in stolen base attempts. They're perfect. Uh, They were six for nine against Wilson. So it's not like he was a ton better, but still, at least he got three of those guys. So where could the Cardinals go for some offensive improvement this early in the season. What do you do? Um, I say early because, you know, because I know we're all sick of hearing, it's early, everybody relax. That's not what I mean. I mean, it's early compared to where the trade deadline is. Trade deadline isn't until July 30th, so relative to that date, it is early. So you're not seeing a whole lot of trades right now. Uh, Luis Arise trade to the Padres uh, caught a lot of people off guard because that was a big name, batting title champion in both leagues who got traded already, which was uh, not normal. That's not normally what happened. So uh, is there anyone else out there that the Cardinals could try and grab just to to wake this offense up a little bit? And the website fansided.com had a write-up by uh, a writer by the name of Kurt Bishop who made a suggestion. And his suggestion is a former Cardinal, a well-traveled former Cardinal who just recently signed in Chicago. And his thought was, what about outfielder Tommy Pham, who signed with the White Sox? Now, before you make judgments and start going, oh, my gosh, stop it. That's dumb. Don't do that. Let's Why not let's talk about it? This offense is so bad right now. Let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. Let's discuss it a little bit. Have a nice adult discussion about Tommy Pham, who, yeah, 36 years old. Big part of the Diamondbacks run to the World Series last year. Can't deny that after getting traded to them by the New York Mets. Um, Signed a minor league deal with the White Sox back on April 15th. Added to the roster April 26th. And in 11 games so far, Tommy Pham is hitting 
295, two home runs, six RBIs, eight runs scored, 326 OBP, slugging 477, OPS of 803, and an OPS plus of 126. Yes, it is a small sample size, 46 plate appearances. But you compare those numbers to what the Cardinals have done so far in a larger sample size, and it's not so bad. Two home runs, that's the same amount that Arenado, Goldie, and Lars Newbar have. Eight runs scored, that's the same as Nolan Gorman. It's more than Newbar and Burleson. But one thing that you obviously that stands out to you is he's another outfielder, which the Cardinals seemingly have plenty of them at the moment. Now that people are getting healthier, you've got Brendan Donovan in left. You've got Dylan Carlson back. You've got Michael Ciani. You've got Lars Newtbar, Alec Burleson. There's five. Do, do, do you need another outfielder? Uh, I suppose you could move Ciani down if you wanted to do it that way. If you were to make a trade like this again, just having a discussion. Don't freak out and say that I'm trying to tell you that Tommy Pham is the savior and he's going to be the one that turns this whole thing around. This is an idea that Kurt Bishop brought up. I'm just talking about it. So here's what Kurt actually had to say about this idea. Granted, the Cardinals have a lot of outfielders in their system and Pham might just add to the log jam. However, the Cardinals need offense and he may be their best option as of now. The team desperately needs to add another bat in order to replace Contreras and have any hope of improving offensively. Now, another aspect about FAM, which I have always been a fan of, I have respected it, I love it, I think it's something that every team needs, is that he's got attitude. He's got attitude, man. He hustles. He doesn't like laziness. He doesn't like excuses. He's a, I'll tell you how it is, how I'm feeling type of guy which rubs people the wrong way sometimes. But I'm sorry, you could lose a you could use a little sandpaper in this Cardinals locker room. The same way that you you felt about bringing in Lance Lynn, who's a very similar guy. Uh why wouldn't why wouldn't you add another guy like that to the mix to just kind of hold people accountable and get get things going in the right direction. Uh he was the guy that at the end of his run with the Mets last year said that it was one of the laziest teams he's ever been around and he said you know he was like I'm not calling out everybody you know he said something about like I think it was Lindor and Pete Alonzo Brandon Nimmo and was like those guys are great but as far as the team man is this team lazy so and, and that's not a direct quote but it was something to that fact to, the, to that type of thing that he said um but I like that I'm not saying that laziness and stuff is a problem with the Cardinals I'm not saying that at all but it wouldn't hurt to add a little more attitude to a club whose confidence has clearly been shaken. Now, Kurt says, uh, continuing from his uh, write-up at fansided.com, which I will have in the uh, in the in the description and in the show notes below. Uh, he says, "Fam also brings, like I said here, competitive fire and veteran leadership to a team that leans heavily on their voices in the clubhouse, such as Matt Carpenter, who is hopefully coming back here soon, Sonny Gray, Lance Lynn, and Kyle Gibson." Fam obviously isn't going to produce on the same level as Contreras, but the Cardinals are desperate, and he does bring power from the right side of the plate as well as the ability to play all three outfield positions, which is something we know the Cardinals like, somebody who's versatile enough that can actually pull off playing left, center, and right field. This, in turn, could allow the Cardinals to shift Brennan Donovan to first base and sit Paul Goldschmidt for a couple of days while he figures things out at the plate. Goldschmidt has been one of the main culprits this season as the Cardinals' offensive struggles continue. Now, it probably wouldn't take much to to, to pry Tommy Pham out of uh, Chicago, although I, it, they've been much better since he's been a part of their team and on their roster and in their lineup. Took two of three from the Cardinals. Um, but let me know what your thoughts are on this. Again, I know it's it's a desperate sounding move, but aren't we feeling a little desperate, Cardinal fans? Aren't we feeling a little desperate right now? Things are going in the wrong direction. We just lost Contreras. The offense hasn't woken up. Goldschmidt's in the toilet. Gorman's in the toilet. You're seeing a little bit better from Brendan Donovan, Lars Newtbar. You're hoping that's good, but uh, you know I, I'm feeling desperate. You're feeling desperate. We got to get this thing. Got to turn it around. Got to go. And maybe this is something that can help. Maybe? I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Again, we're just throwing stuff out there at this point. See if anything sticks. So 
Give me your full feedback uh, on YouTube as well as on Twitter X. Uh, another option to improve the team is the minor league guys, guys he already have in the system. So we're going to head down to the farm next for some updates on some guys like Jordan Walker, Thomas and JC and more. We'll do that next on Locked on Cardinals. This Mother's Day, get something thoughtful for mom on DoorDash. Surprise her from wherever you are with fresh bouquets, the latest tech gift cards, self-care treatments, and more to make her day that much better. You can use the code locked on MLB to get 50% off your next order up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order right now on DoorDash. You can pair those flowers with a gift card to something that your mom really, really wants. You know, if she uh, is a fan, I keep mentioning his sporting goods wear because my mom is the person that loves to buy every jacket, every hat, every t-shirt that she can get her hands on for her favorite teams. It's just something she does. I know for a fact, if I got her a gift card to a sporting goods store, that she would use that in a heartbeat. It'd be one of her favorite things that she got. She'd get to pick it out for herself, something that she really, really wants. And you pair that up with something like a bouquet of flowers, which will brighten her day. And I'm winning. I'm winning. I know my mom very well. So you find something that maybe your mom would want a gift card too. Plus, you get the convenience of shopping on your phone, so you don't have to be that one driving around at the last minute trying to find a store that is open that might have something your mom wants. You don't want to be in that situation. You know, you don't want to be that desperate. You want to have it planned out, and it's coming up this weekend, you guys. So hopefully you got your act together. Order now. Get everything you need for Mother's Day. Do it the right way. Do it on DoorDash. Use code locked on MLB to get 50% off your next order up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order now on DoorDash. That's locked on MLB. Order using DoorDash today. Terms apply. All right, time out. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go, an entertaining and a fun way to pass the time on your next road trip. Uh, the next time you're waiting on your wife or your girlfriend or your husband or your boyfriend to finish getting ready to go out on a night. I, I mean, come on. We've all been there, whichever side it is, whether it's your man, whether it's your woman, you're sitting there waiting like we were supposed to be out of the door 15, 20 minutes ago. What are you doing for those 15, 20 minutes? Monopoly Go! Monopoly Go! That could be your go-to. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so many things to get, like unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces, hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting and fresh every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that can help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day after turn down the volume because of all the shouting? We've all been there. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. You get can't miss analysis. You get the opinions. You get the news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. Again, your comments, love them, bring them, whether you like what you're hearing, whether you hate what you're hearing. I want all the feedback on YouTube. You don't have to make fun of my chair, though. I, and as some of my mom pointed out the other day, somebody would say, you need a new chair. Who cares what my chair looks like? That's not, that's not what I'm looking for. I want feedback about what we're talking about. When it comes to the Cardinals, uh, hit me up on Twitter, X anytime you want, obviously in the comments section. But uh, let's talk about the minor leagues. Our buddy Daniel Guerrero, shout out to him at STL today.com covers the Cardinals minor leagues always a great source for updates so he's always bringing them to you he gets them uh, I don't know, a couple times a week so go to stl sports today.com and uh, follow Daniel Guerrero on Twitter X but uh, he's been dropping some updates on what's going on with some of these guys and is there anybody <laughs> that can help the Cardinals at the major league level right now that is actually down in AAA I know we just brought up Jose Fermin who was sitting I think 350 down in Memphis, so they were like, yeah, let's bring him up. And uh, so far, Jose Fermin, 
I've been pretty pleased with what I've seen out of him, specifically offensively. So I'm hoping he gets more at-bats until some of these other guys get going. But let's start with a guy that was supposed to be. <laughs> that was supposed to be the everyday starting right fielder this year, and that's Jordan Walker. Came out of the gate ice cold, right? Was getting pitched away. Couldn't find the pitch recognition that he needed, and he was chasing sliders, taking fastballs, and couldn't get anything going. So they sent him down to Memphis for the second straight year to work on things like launch angles and pitch recognition. So how is Jordan Walker doing so far? Well, in Memphis's 12-3 to loss on Wednesday, he went one for four and is now hitting 281 since he's been at AAA. Now, the day before, he was two for three with a pair of singles and a walk. One of those singles off the bat at 105.4 miles per hour, which is good. It was not in the air, though. It was it was hit on the ground. He smoked it, but it was hit on the ground. That this is the, this is the problem. You've got a guy, a young man, right? 21 years old still, six foot six, 250 pounds. Sounds like a tight end in the National Football League. He still does not have a home run this year. Doesn't have one at AAA, did not have one at the major league level yet. We are in, uh, yeah, you know, a little past a week in May. Jordan Walker hasn't hit one over the wall yet. I mean, a man that big hasn't even accidentally run into one that leaves the yard. Like, how crazy is that? Like, you would think that just, you know, just, oh, I caught it right and it hit a jet stream or anything to hit a home run. And that just has not been the case yet for Jordan Walker. He's not getting the ball in the air. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. The Cardinals need him to do that. He needs to start doing that. And that's what he's doing at AAA Memphis, trying to work on that. How about a guy who was hitting the ball in the air way too much? And we'd like to see him put it on the ground more. Uh, Victor Scott the second, the speedster. Had a rough go at the big league level. He's, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember the date that he got sent down. But since going down, hasn't been all that great for Victor Scott the second either. He's hitting just 173 since joining the Redbirds. Now he does have six stolen bases in 12 games. So that's good. That's a that's a positive, but it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows for Victor Scott the second either since going down, that's for sure. Thomas JC, guy that got a lot of playing time in spring training. It seemed like the Cardinals were Definitely thinking about keeping him on the roster the way he was performing uh, in spring training this year. Uh, he's a guy that fans are curious to know if he's ready for some big league action finally to spark this offense. I'll let you be the judge because he's currently hitting 246. Four home runs, 17 RBIs across 114 at bats. He does have a 341 on base percentage, uh, 745 OPS. So these are solid numbers, but nothing that, at least in my opinion, warrants an immediate call up to help the big league club. Like if he was doing what Jose Fermin was doing, then you'd be like, well, maybe it's time to bring him up. But 246, I don't, I, you know, I don't see this every day. So I don't know how they're pitching him and whatnot. If they're pitching around him, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but good numbers, not great. So probably going to let him marinate a little bit more at the AAA level. Uh, now, one guy that is lighting it up so far offensively for the Memphis Redbirds is Cesar Prieto. You remember him acquired from the Orioles, part of that Jack Flaherty trade. And Prieto, one for two, and a home run in yesterday's game. He's now hitting, now get ready for this. He's now hitting 319, six dingers, 19 RBIs, uh, on base percentage 358, OPS 884. Now, the six home runs stands out in a big way for me because last year he hit just 10 all season. He's not known as a big power guy. Supposed to be line drive, batting average kind of guy, but the power is showing up this year. So he had 10 last year in 123 games, 11 the year before in 115 games. He's already got six through 30 games. So that's an eye opener. That's an eye opener for sure. He's a name to keep an eye on. Uh, Luke and Baker, remember last year, who just destroyed Triple A pitching was trying to get a, a triple crown comes up to the Cardinals and doesn't do much at all. Doesn't get a whole lot of at bats, very sporadic and uh, suffered for it because he didn't, he didn't ever get anything going at the major league level. Didn't look all that great this spring either. So far at triple A is hitting just 218. He does have six home runs. He's got 26 RBI. So you're getting the production there, but the batting average way down from where he was last year at triple A. And we saw 
that kind of issue at the major league level where I, I don't know if his bat speed is good enough at the major league level. But again, I don't know if he got a fair shake uh, either because um, they really didn't play him all that much until the very end. And uh, by then, you know, everybody was feeling kind of down in the dumps because the season was over. Uh, Moises Gomez, somebody that just a few years ago set a record for home runs at the minor league level for the Cardinals. Really rough start. He's hitting just 190, two home runs, six RBIs. So not a whole lot down there on the forum right now to, to really pick from at the moment. Prieto's the one that stands out, but you got Fermin up there. So uh, not a whole lot of room. So they're probably going to just let Prieto do his thing down there. And, uh, you know, I, you're really not going to bench any of the younger guys you got at the major league level anyway, right? Like they're not going to just quit on Nolan Gorman. Would they send Nolan Gorman down? Probably not. Probably not. Carlson still hitless since coming back. They're not going to quit on him. They just got him back. Newt's been struggling, but uh, I mean, you're, you're really just stuck. You are stuck right now with this team, with this roster. They're just going to have to figure it out because they're supposed to be better than this. It's not like the Cardinals built this roster and we're like, eh, these guys are kind of crap, but that's what we're going to roll with. Like these guys were supposed to be good. Like you thought Gorman was going to be better than this. You thought Goldie, Newt, you thought all these guys are going to be better than what they're doing. You didn't think Nolan Arenado would have just two home runs. Who saw that coming? Like the only guy that was really living up to the expectations so far this year, I think Mason Wynn has, but as a veteran, Wilson Contreras. So now he's gone. Now you've lost him. So it's going to be tough, but for the whole roster, Goldie might sit a game here and there, but he's going to be back out there this week. And you know that he's got to try and get it right. These issues aren't going to get fixed by just doing pure batting cage work or hitting off of a tee or watching video. These guys got to do it in games against real pitching against real guys, really trying to get them out, not in practice sessions and stuff like that. That's all fine and dandy, but they got to just do it and figure it out at the major league level in real games. That's just the way it is. And we're we're just going to have to deal with it. And we got to live through it. And that's what's going on right now. Everybody's just like trying to push through it to see, can we get out of this? Can we, can we figure it out? Maybe they can do it this weekend. I don't know. They're taking on the first place Brewers. We'll preview that series next on Locked on Cardinals. Baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs. Take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. Sonny Gray going to be on the mound tonight. I don't care who he's facing offensively. I I'd be betting on Sonny Gray if I was you. You can also get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You got the Stanley Cup playoffs going on right now. And the great part about prize picks, it's my favorite part about it, is how quick, how easy you can make your entry, submit it, and be done with it. Like, there's not a whole lot of hoops to jump through to figure out what the heck you're doing. You know, you go to... Cardinals Brewers matchup tonight, go to Sonny Gray and you'll have his strikeouts uh, runs against all of that stuff will be sitting right there for you. So if you think Sonny Gray is going to shove tonight, by all means, put some money on that one and uh, get, get, get winning. If, if the Cardinals aren't winning, at least you can be winning off of them, right? Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So download the app today. Use the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Use your sports knowledge to your advantage. Download the app today. Use the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's also now available on Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. You can find it now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. So I was hoping that at this point, going into this series against the Brewers in Milwaukee, that the Cardinals were going to be in a much better place after playing the Tigers, the White Sox, and the Mets. Second series in, uh, in, in, against the Brewers in Milwaukee, 
who swept them at Bush Stadium earlier this year. We needed them to come in with some momentum, and unfortunately, that is not the case. Exact opposite. The Cardinals went two and six against those teams. They've lost four in a row. They've lost their starting catcher. They've lost their best hitter. They're now six games back behind Milwaukee in the NL Central. The Brewers, though, not exactly lighting the world on fire either. They're four and six in their last 10, while the Cardinals have been three and seven. So despite the Cardinals struggling as bad as they have, the Brewers have only gained one game on them over the last 10. So there's a little bit of positive, right? That the Brewers haven't just taken off. Uh, most of the NL Central right now is in a bad spot. Um, the Reds have lost a bunch in a row. Uh, the Pirates have, have not been, you know, everybody's kind of struggling in the Central right now. Uh, Milwaukee actually just lost their three-game series to the Royals, and it took, and I think it was a ninth inning, three-run shot by their shortstop, Willie Adamas, for them to win game two. That was the only one they took, or they would have been swept in the series by Kansas City. Now, they did get Christian Yelich back, who has been a Cardinal killer over the years. He's back in the lineup, came back on Wednesday. He's been out since April 12th due to those reoccurring back issues. Uh, started the year red hot, remember, before the back flared up again. He was 0 for 5 as the DH in Wednesday's game, so he's still trying to get used to things. And that's good news for the Cardinals because... They got their ace on the mound tonight. Sonny Gray, as I mentioned, on the bump tonight. Four and one has been outstanding and starting for the Brewers will be 25-year-old right-hander Tobias Myers. Now, he started just three games so far this year. He is 0-2 and has an ERA of 6.23. That is music to the Cardinals' ears. For a team that has been struggling offensively to hear those numbers, you got to get a little bit excited about that. He does have a five-pitch arsenal. He throws a fastball, cutter, slider. Those are the main three, but he also works in the changeup and the curveball. Doesn't throw hard. Four seam only averages around 92-93. The pitches that he uses as his finishing pitches, the slider and the changeup. He goes to the off-speed. Those are the put-away pitches for Tobias. He's in the uh, 89th percentile in chase rate, which is you know upper echelon. So... Cardinals are going to have to try to lay off that. He's going to try to get you to chase out of the zone when he gets ahead in the count, and that is where they got to be disciplined. So we'll see if they can pull that off tonight. Uh, righties, this is a right-handed pitcher, by the way. Righties are hitting 250 with five home runs and an OPS of 1.108 against him. Lefties only at 227. They have no home runs and an OPS of 564. So while normally a left-handed dominant lineup would be ideal against a right-hander. Usually the, the splits are better the other way. You might see more righties in the lineup tonight. The problem is the Cardinals have just a ton of left-handed hitters. <laughs> you know, you got Gorman, Siani, Newt Bar, uh, who am I forget? Donovan. Um, anybody else out there? Burleson. Like, those are guys that you're probably going to see in the lineup tonight because they're some of their best hitters. So, uh, probably going to get Carlson from the right side, which, uh, or from the left side, which is not his strongest side. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what Ali does. Yeah. There's no lineup has been submitted this early yet, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what he comes up with. Uh, might look more like the lineup was supposed to on Wednesday behind Sonny Gray. But, um, and I'm curious, like you, if the righties hit so much better, load them up. So maybe the day off yesterday that Goldie was supposed to have, he's going to be back in the lineup tonight. I can almost guarantee you that. He usually hits well in Milwaukee. So let's just hope uh, let's just hope we can turn things around against a, a subpar starter for the Milwaukee Brewers in game one, especially with your ace on the mound in Sonny Gray. Like Cardinals need to take this one. They need to they need to snap this losing streak and they need to, to get off on the right foot here in this four game series. So thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals at a JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. I know you're frustrated. I am too. Hopefully they can pull it out tonight. Thanks for listening to Locked on Cardinals. Have a good one.